And welcome to UNA Forum presents this time 18 United Nations Association Film Festival UNAF, which will be held from October 15 to October 25th. The theme this year is running out of time, and we have a lot of filmmakers coming to our town, to Palo Alto, but we also have screenings in East Palo Alto, San Francisco, and also Stanford University. We are extremely happy to have in our studio uh, four filmmakers, and they're going to give you a flavor of this year's film festival. So we'll start with Adam, and uh, uh, we'll talk about his film, Far From Home. Please, Adam, tell us a little bit about uh, the inspiration of this wonderful young man who is going to be also uh, during the festival with us and what happened to him. Yes, uh, so Far From Home is the story of Brolin Mweche. He's a young Ugandan immigrant to the United States, pre-med student, and the first hopeful Olympic snowboarder from any African country. Uh, so the film traces his beginnings from very humble beginnings in Kampala, Uganda, in the village of Machindye, and eventually he ends up in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, immigrating when he's 12 years old to the States, and it's there where he develops a passion for snowboarding, starts to meet the community to empower him, and now hoping to compete in the 2018 Olympics. So, so let's see the clip uh, from the film Far From Home. Stupid feeling in my stomach, dude. I don't know if I'm nervous or if I'm scared. It's been a long time since I've been here. Very long time. You know, if you have to kneel down just to talk to your own father on two knees like you're a slave, there's a problem with that. What do you do? How, how do you even start greeting? Do I go in with a handshake? Do you hug? What do you say? This is why I grew up. And the only question that just comes back to my mind is like, really, like, if I had stayed, where would I have been? So I've been practicing and getting to that level of skill. Now I can try to go to the Olympics. Hello. I'm sure that you know don't we Africa don't pass place you want to put again. If you don't have the energy, you don't have the determination, you can't do it. And I'm happy that this gentleman has that. Yeah. My name is Brolin Byron Moeje. I was born in Uganda, 1992. I had a lot of fear, and I guess that fear has driven me to where I am right now. We just saw the clip uh, from the film Far From Home, which is going to be screened on our 18 United Nations Association Film Festival on October 16th. And uh, Adam, we see that 
there's a fear, obviously, in, in a young man who is coming to the United States and obviously trying to achieve uh, something which is more than uh, he probably dreamt about. So, and, and this is what we see in the film, he did this. And he is so proud of that and he's sharing the story. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about making trust between co-producers, producers, directors, and him? Well, trust was, um, <laughs> it was an issue at times. Brolin, I think, grew up with the father and family figures that uh, trust was not instilled in him. He kind of felt very defensive, especially when he came to the States, being one of the only African students at our school in Lincoln, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it was something we worked on constantly, especially when we were filming in Uganda. Tensions were high. Uh, the cultural differences were vast, especially for those of us from the States. Um, so he, we worked on it constantly, and I think Brolin grew to trust all of us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Adam. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, another beautiful film about Africa, going back to South Africa, uh, is uh, your film, uh, sort of Soft Vengeance, dealing with uh, uh, activist uh, Arby Sachs. Obviously, a lot of people know about him, but didn't know so many details what your film is bringing to us, and obviously celebrating this powerful man. Um, tell us the, the, the moment when you decided, obviously, to make a film about him and, and, and bring him uh, on the screen with all other people uh, that we are going to see in, 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 the, in the film. When was the decision in your mind? It was a long oh, time ago. It was. It was in 2009. It was at the end of July, and I was in South Africa for a month. And my last day in South Africa, Albie and I had coffee. And I've known Albie Sachs since the mid-1970s because he kept coming to the United States to help gain support for the anti-apartheid movement. And we met when I was a law student in the mid-70s. So I'd known Albie all these years, and I'd known you know, all of what had happened to him. And I was standing, literally putting my bag into the taxi that was going to take me to the airport. And I said, wait, 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 Albie, what do you think if I make a film about you? And Alvi is somebody who has been filmed before, and I felt like he would jump at the chance. And he didn't. He said, um, I think I need to see some of your other work. <laughs> so I left him a couple of films that I just happened to have with me. And I'd say maybe six weeks later, he got back to me and said, OK, you know, we can try this. At that point, I started raising the money and then beginning to really work on what was this film going to be about. Because for me, doing a profile of an individual is so much more than just biography, you know. And the reason I wanted to do a film about him is because I felt like through Albie's experience, I could share whatever I was going to learn about the anti-apartheid movement with an American audience. And the big sort of surprise for me in this whole experience has been how important the film has been to South Africans. Mm -hmm. Because young South Africans know as little about their own history as young Americans know about their history. Mm -hmm. You know, the anti-apartheid movement is somewhere between the French Revolution and, you know, World War I. It really feels very far away. Um, and so the film has had legs in South Africa that I never imagined. Mm -hmm. well, let's see the clip from the film. And a voice says, it was a car bomb. That moment every freedom fighter waits for, will they come for me today? And they'd come for me and I'd survived. Albi has been through the grinder. And he speaks what he lives. Lying in bed recovering, I receive a note. Don't worry, Comrade Albie, we will avenge you. Avenge me? We're going to chop off the arms? We're going to blind people? Where's that going to get us? But if we get democracy in South Africa and freedom 
That will be my soft vengeance. We just saw the clip from the film uh, Soft Vengeance, Albie Sachs and the New South Africa. Uh, Evie, um, one of the things that we uh, saw also from this clip and is going to be ob obviously a discussion, I'm sure, in the audience, and this is actually this beautiful friendship between Desmond Tutu and Albie Sachs. And when you approach Desmond Tutu to talk about uh, another hero, um, I'm sure he, he was pleased, but there is also the moment of reconciliation and process of being, bringing both sides and, and continuing the process of education. So, so for me, the big challenge in the film is that I, so what people don't know is that Albi was blown up by a car bomb set by security forces from South Africa when he was living in Mozambique in exile. Mm -hmm. And through a series of, you know, efforts on all of our parts, we actually were able to get the guy who oversaw the bombing to be in the film. Um, and so the real reconciliation, this guy in the end decided to go to the TRC, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, and he went to see Albie before he went. And so Albie starts out by saying, so here's the guy who tried to kill me, and here I am, the person he tried to kill, and they had to face each other as human beings. And Alby and Henry do not have the same view of reconciliation. Henry is still, in my humble opinion, looking for Alby's forgiveness. On the other hand, Alby's like, how are we gonna coexist as members of the new South Africa, and how do we move forward? And he has a very strong feeling that that was the only way for South Africa to move forward. You know, trials would have taken too long. They wouldn't have had the evidence. There, ne there never would have been the healing in South Africa that they desperately needed in order to embrace the new democracy. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the film is a lot about this particular two-person reconciliation, mm -hmm. as well as what it symbolizes for a much larger, you know, theme within South Africa. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, and Christopher, reconciliation in the environmental movement, we need this uh, obviously a lot because uh, uh, one of the uh, themes and the topics which is going through the raising to zero uh, and, and um, uh, obviously pursuing to the zero waste is bringing people to understand what's happening from both sides, the people who are for the uh, climate change and people who are against and, 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 and a lot of things are happening in your film in San Francisco. So tell us the, the whole story about the whole movement. Well, actually, the, the first thought that came to mind is film festival, huh? You know, all these different moods, very strong moods, and, um, and how they all can come together in one film festival. It's very striking. These are really very strong films. Um, the film Racing to Zero is about how everything that we touch helping us think or wanting us to think more about where does it come from and where does it go. So I've often said that uh, I wanted to be a filmmaker who made trashy movies. <laughs> <laughs> and so I finally made a trashy movie. And the film essentially is in pursuit of zero waste. It's how can we, what happens to the planet? What happens to each other? What happens to a community? What happens to our interaction? And when we start thinking about the word garbage, and every time we hear the word garbage, we think resource. Mm -hmm. These are the raw materials that have already been produced by the earth. We've dragged them out of the earth. And now if we recycle them, if we reuse them, if we do compost, what then? What will that mean for the planet and for each other and for jobs and businesses? Mm -hmm. So the film, actually, I, I tell people sometimes, I start out as a filmmaker, mm -hmm. and I ended up a witness mm -hmm. to this process. Mm -hmm. And the film is about the process can we achieve zero waste? Mm -hmm. Let's see the clip from the film. The future would be, it's empty. 
all the stuff we used to call waste. It's not a waste, it's a resource. Most people don't know there's a global dumping crisis in e-waste. I didn't know. I was in the industry for 20 years. There are just so many little things, you know, you're like, where does gum go? We want a city that's going to be the first city in the whole country, if not in the world, to go to 100% recycle, 100% no waste. We are able to make a direct replacement for plastics made from petrochemicals. Simply by taking food scraps and some straw and uh, otherwise waste materials and recycling it into that which is the most important for soil, this is uh, magic. Nature operates in cycles and that's what we need to do. A nutrient composting cycle, natural cycle, and an industrial recycling cycle. So Christopher, obviously for all uh, the filmmakers uh, who are in our festival and also in general, the filmmakers, what you said, that, uh, camera as a witness is, is one of those moments. And in your film, we see so many elements of the, of the uh, witnessing what's happening in every second, every second as we live. And uh, uh, what was the, the moment that you said, oh, this is, I never, ever thought it would be uh, something like this in front of me. Well, I was constantly surprised as we made the film. I mean, I began the film, and I started thinking as recycling the lie that we can live with. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. is this something that's not true to make us feel good? And so the producer, Diana Fuller, insisted that we go behind the scenes every step of the way. Mm -hmm. But the big, so part of the surprise was that actually recycling is real and how it's done. There's a lot of hand sorting of materials. But the biggest surprise in making the film is the spirit of the people that we met, really. Everyone seemed to just feel good about what they were doing. And uh, nothing in the film was rehearsed, set up, scripted. It's all very spontaneous. And we kept getting these big smiles from people as they were collecting garbage. And mm -hmm. uh, I would say maybe my favorite part, well, there are many favorite parts. Mm -hmm. my, one of my most favorite parts was going for garbage collecting in Chinatown at midnight mm -hmm. in San Francisco. <laughs> and uh, we went out with the collector, and I said, this is just amazing to me. He said, yeah, well, tonight was PG. Sometimes it's triple X out here. <laughs> <laughs> so it was the spirit of the people, really, yeah. was the thing that just caught me by surprise every single step of the way. Thank you, Christopher. And uh, Vanessa, obviously, in the spirit of family, you made a documentary uh, dealing with environmental issues with your son. Whereas then Poop is uh, telling us a lot about uh, what your son had in his mind and how he pursued the idea of environmental issues. So... Actually, I, I, I hesitate to admit this on camera, but I, it, the idea was actually mine. I just asked <laughs> okay. him if he would be willing to <laughs> you, <family. laughs> start it. In it. Um, no, I actually got the idea um, biking to an Earth Day event in traffic. And I had just learned, because it was Earth Week, I had just learned this statistic that um, every gallon of gas we burn turns into 19 pounds of carbon dioxide. And, and I was like, that's just a staggering number. Like, A, I didn't even understand how that was possible. I don't have a science background. And B, like, what's up with that, right? And, and what if we could see it? Like, I was imagining it, you know, being with all these trucks and cars, actually not very far from the studio. And, and, and so I suddenly sort of had this idea of like, well, what if you could have a, a little scientist explaining this and then you could just visualize it and you could just have this animation of all of this crap looking like crap, like mm -hmm. 19 pounds of crap instead of just this invisible gas that just went nowhere. Mm -hmm. So that was the idea for it. So let's see the, the clip from Burst and Poop. Did you know that burning a gallon of gas creates 19 pounds of carbon dioxide? And that's bad, because carbon dioxide is what's heating up our planet. And that's really bad. So if you think about it, carbon dioxide is actually worse than poop. Carbon dioxide is also called CO2. And a bit of CO2 is okay. The plants need to breathe. Kind of like poop. I mean, poop can turn into dirt. 
If you just have a little bit. If you have a lot... Well, that's a problem. And we've been making way too much carbon dioxide. Because we keep driving cars... And we keep using energy from dirty fuels we dig out of the ground, like coal. And we keep driving cars that burn gas. And they make a lot of CO2. Working with the kids is obviously a big challenge, and particularly working with your own kids. Yes. So <laughs> tell us about that part of the filmmaking process. Um, yeah, well, we actually, I had to, um, yeah, I had to direct my own son, which was a bit of a challenge. He'd never been in a film before. Um, he was not a child actor or anything. He was just my kid. He did remarkably well, actually. I thought I was going to have to get him some coaching or something, and then the person who was going to coach him fell through, and I, we just kind of winged it. Um, a dear friend, and probably worked with you guys, uh, Vicente Franco, shot it for us. Mm -hmm. and um, Oh, so you're a uh, filmmaker for a long time. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm a professional filmmaker. I don't usually shoot my own family, but um, <laughs> yeah. And, and he just sort of rose to the occasion. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's a, a little bit of a miracle, to be quite honest. <laughs> Wonderful. So, uh, Worse Than Poop is going to be presenting in the 18th United Nations Association Film Festival on the last day on October 25th, and, and it's going to be also uh, a panel at the end of our discussion about climate, because uh, we do have focus on our film festival on eight millennium development goals, which are actually expiring this year, and they're switching to the sustainable uh, uh, goals, uh, development goals, and uh, the focus of this last panel on October the 25th is going to be climate change. And since we are uh, several weeks before the uh, big conference in France dealing with the climate change. So um, this climate countdown is on the last day. Uh, but before that, we will have uh, several panels, and I would like to invite all our filmmakers here and also uh, our guests and the audience to come and join us also for the panel on October 19th, uh, when we have uh, a focus on the funding for the documentaries and the nonprofits with social change. Um, so uh, the other question that I always ask our guests and the filmmakers, obviously the presentation at our film festival is also collaboration with the different community organizations and uh, schools. So. Uh, let's start Adam with you again and tell us quickly what is your plan, whom you would like to invite and uh, uh, to also invite you through uh, this, our, through our program. I'd like to invite everybody possible to come out and connect with this film and every other film that we've heard about tonight. I think they're all very timely and relevant. Um, so our film, Far From Home, will be screening at the Coverly Community Center on Friday, October 16th at 4.15 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, Come out, meet the team, meet Brolin, and uh, hopefully be a part of history in the making. Also, uh, uh, please let us know about the, the uh, website or when... Web mm -hmm. Absolutely, sorry. Website is farfromhomemovie.com. All of our tour information is there. Uh, if for some reason you can't make it out to this festival, we'll be releasing on demand in November. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'd really like you to be there, want everyone to meet, and uh, it's going to be a great festival. So. Thank you. Abby? Okay, and my film is playing on October 21st at 8.30 at the Something International Studies. It's you have a, to it's, say it. It's a, Freeman, it's a Freeman Spoli International Studies. It's, okay. it's a part of the Stanford University, uh, one of the buildings at Stanford, so it's not so complicated. And we are going to have on our website, we already have actually, uh, the maps, and also there's going to be a brochure with all the information in the maps as well. And I think my film, uh, you know, as we discussed a little bit earlier, the concept of soft vengeance is how do we find another way to resolve differences besides violence and shooting each other? And when we were making the film, we were all really thinking about how this film could have some meaning for high school kids, even middle school kids, but it, let's just say high school kids mm -hmm. and up. And it, I hope that it gives people a different way to think about conflict. And from, you know, literally from the schoolyard to countries going after each other, you know, how do we begin to think about new ways of resolving differences? Mm -hmm. Not even of mm -hmm. reconciling, just of resolving differences. And I think Albie is a voice of 
sanity and humanity and humility and after you spend an hour, an hour and a half with him in this film, I think you find a kind of calmer place inside yourself to think if, if that if this man could forgive and move on and in his own way even embrace the person who essentially was responsible for having him lose his right arm, and he was a right-handed person at the time, um, then all of us need to find different ways to think about the people we sort of consider our enemies. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that Alvi has a lot to say to all of us about what it means to live in a, and to move towards a more peaceful world. Mm -hmm. So I hope everybody from high school students through the college students mm -hmm. at Stanford will come out and be part of this conversation and hopefully be touched by the film. And it also brings me to another question about uh, the distribution. Uh, do you have education distribution? And this is also a question for all of you. Uh, do you already have an educational distribution and making the... I don't have a specific educational distributor, but we've mm -hmm. been making the film available. And the really oh, good wonderful. news vis-a-vis -vis high schools mm -hmm. is that there is an organization called Facing History that is actually a very active in the Palo Alto area. It's where I first met them. Uh -huh. And they are taking the film and essentially formatting it for high school classrooms and for wonderful. the teachers that they have who work with high school kids. Wonderful. So, so looking the answer forward. is yes. Wonderful. <laughs> Christopher... I think we're showing October 18th, 115 at the Coverly Community Center. Mm -hmm. And actually, because we sit here in this tech wonderland that surrounds us, I would like the people who are involved with the tech industries who make all the stuff that we use, the 18 electronics appliances on the average we all, mm -hmm. we all use, and then, but where does that go? And a lot of it is sent overseas where a man in our film, James Cow, points out 80% of what goes overseas is going somewhere to kill someone. So it... I've talked about the film in kind of a light way. The subject is very serious. My goal would be to have the President of the United States declare zero waste as a national policy and the heads of both Facebook and Google to declare the same. Wonderful. And Vanessa, quickly, your um, message. My film's showing it the last day on the 25th at Stanford campus. And um, yes, we are actually, we now have an online lesson plan for teachers K through 8. Wonderful. And we would like to invite you all to join us for the 18 United Nations Association Film Festival from October 15th to the 25th. Thank you so much for being our guest in the studio. And we'll Thank see you, you at the festival. Yeah. And let's see again the trailer for our 18th UNAF.